In the third Predator movie, Predators, upon their arrival at the Super Predator camp, the group of humans find a classic style Yaoja being held captive and tied to a totem. This individual is referred to as the crucified predator to some, or the classic predator to others. In the film, this is the first time we see this Yaoja. He is an enemy of the super predators due to a blood feud between the super and classic types. This rivalry between the two species was started when the Nightstorm Predator, who disapproved of the Honor Code, sought to unite all super predators under his own leadership. The Crucified Predator has a very similar appearance to the Jungle Hunter seen in the first movie. This was done on purpose as a nod to that film. After Royce, Isabel and the others flee the camp and escape into a river, they make their way back later on after being informed by Nolan that the Super Predators keep their ship nearby, and they come up with the idea of freeing the captive Yaoja in exchange for him flying them all back to Earth. After being freed by Royce, the classic Predator understands what he wants, and sets the ship's autopilot to take the mercenary home. But then, the Super Predator leader Berserker appears, and Classic stays to fight him and give Royce time to make it to the ship. Unfortunately, due to being drained of energy after being held captive, Classic is killed by Berserker and the ship is destroyed, stranding the humans with no way of escape. But how did the Classic Predator get captured in the first place? When we first see him in the film, he is already tied to the totem. Well, there actually exists a motion comic which acts as a short prelude to the film and details the classic Yaoja's capture by the Super Predators. It begins at the Game Preserve planet at the hunting camp. We see the Super Predators preparing the totem and crucifixion site and then venturing out in search of prey. They see the classic Predator and decide that as a member of their sworn enemies, he will make a good sacrifice. Falconer and Berserker draw their weapons and attack but the classic Predator fights back and draws first blood, striking Falconer across the shoulder with a handheld blade. The way he is seen holding it mirrors the way we see Billy in the original movie making his last stand, drawing a parallel. Billy, a human, was making his last stand against a Yaoja, and now classic, a Yaoja, is making his stand against the Super Predators. And then immediately after, and much in the same fashion, Classic makes his escape from his pursuers, just as Dutch did 23 years earlier, by falling from a waterfall. The Predator makes his way onto a mud bank, but is caught in a net laid by the Tracker Predator who is waiting for him. When the unfortunate Yaoja regains consciousness, he has been dragged all the way back to the Super Predator camp and crucified to the totem. As the camera pans out, we see the now crucified Predator surrounded by Super Predators, and the words, the weak fall, the strong reign supreme. So going by the motion comic, it would seem Classic Predator was likely abducted in the same way the humans were, and then used as mere prey to be tracked down and hunted. But, as a show of their species dominance and superiority over the classic Yaoja, the Super Yaoja crucify him and leave him to die a slower, more agonising death. That is, until Royce frees him and he battles the Super Predator. In my opinion, taking into consideration the crucified classic Predator had been strung up for an unknown amount of time, possibly hours, or even days or weeks, and he still managed to give Berserker a run for his money, despite having certainly been both starved and dehydrated. I would say that it was actually Classic who was the superior warrior, and had they been on equal footing, I think Classic would have won the fight. This is a pretty common opinion held among fans of the movie, and for good reason. Whether intentional or not, due to this factor allowing the fight to be left to interpretation rather than being unanimous, the filmmakers managed to not undermine the entire classic Predator species, and dodged the same kind of controversy met by the Jurassic Park filmmakers when they made the Spinosaurus kill the T-Rex in Jurassic Park 3, a plot point that divides fans of that franchise even to this day. Let me know your thoughts on the classic vs Super Predator fight, as well as what you thought of the prequel motion comic. Had you seen it before, or is this the first time you've heard of it? Does it answer some of the questions you had after watching the Predators movie, or are you left asking more? 
I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please consider leaving a like on the video as that helps a lot with YouTube's infamous algorithm. If you want to help support the channel directly, then channel memberships are available from as little as $1.99. If you want to see more, then I'll have some extra videos on screen for you now that I think you'll enjoy. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.